justice. Fairness originates between parties of approximately equal power, as Thucydides correctly grasped in the terrible colloquy between the Athenian and Melian ambassadors. Where there is no clearly recognizable superiority of force, and a contest would result in mutual injury, producing no decisive outcome, the idea arises of coming to an understanding and negotiating over one another's demands. The characteristic of exchange is the original characteristic of justice. Each satisfies the other, inasmuch as each requires what he values more than the other does. One gives to the other what he wants to have, to be henceforth his own, and in return receives what one oneself desires. Justice is thus requital, an exchange, under the presupposition of an approximately equal power position. Revenge, therefore, belongs originally within the domain of justice. It is an exchange. Gratitude, likewise. Justice goes back naturally to the viewpoint of an enlightened self-preservation, thus to the egoism of the reflection, to what end should I injure myself uselessly and perhaps even then not achieve my goal? So much for the origin of justice. Since, in accordance with their intellectual habit, men have forgotten the original purpose of so-called just and fair actions, and especially because children have for millennia been trained to admire and imitate such actions, it has gradually come to appear that a just action is an unegoistic one. But it is on this appearance that the high value accorded it depends, and this value is, moreover, continually increasing, as all valuations do. For something highly valued is striven for, imitated, multiplied through sacrifice, and grows as the worth of the toil and zeal expended by each individual is added to the worth of the valued thing. How little moral would the world appear without forgetfulness? A poet could say that God has placed forgetfulness as a doorkeeper on the threshold of the temple of human dignity.